last time on Sprig Play's Lamento Beyond the Void. He opened his mouth to say, come with me. And here we go. After they walked a while, the fog seemed to clear. They had arrived at the village of Kira. Conway thought how he'd been lost just a little while ago. No, it was simply because he was with this Kirin. Even though the fog cleared, the heaviness of the air didn't change. Like the Yukoku Valley, the village of Kira was covered in darkness. Kira. All of the cats' houses were built on top of trees. Their exteriors were rustic, they were absolutely no decorations. It was a much drearier place than Kauru. Huh. If Kauru was green, then he'd say Kira's color was gray. It had a barbarous air to it. Well, maybe they don't eat people, you know? All of the village's cats who watched them just narrowed their eyes and showed caution. Threatening growls rumbled in their chests. It was hard to tell clearly, but there seemed to be numerous cats with black ears, tail, and markings. And the cat who'd led him here now walked straight through the village. In the middle of the village was a big dead tree. Built on top of it was a hut noticeably larger than the other houses. Leading up to it were wooden stairs. Wait here a moment. The black cat headed up the steps and entered the hut, then came back out a while later. From atop the tree, he signaled to Conway with his eyes. Conway went up the stairs to enter the hut. The interior of the hut was a lot more spacious than he'd thought, but there was nothing valuable in the dim hut, only a few storage pots on some time-worn shelves. An old cat stood in the center of the hut, and a younger cat waited behind him. Conaway was surprised when he saw the young cat. The cat was female. Her white ears and tail stood out well against her brown skin. The female cat glared at Conaway with big eyes as if to expel his gaze. The old cat sat down. His body was large. A deep crease ran down the middle of his forehead. Even though he was old, the sharp glint in his eyes quietly seized Konoe. His ears and tail weren't black, but marks firmly stood out on his skin. You may leave, the old cat said to the black cat Konoe had followed here. His tone felt more severe than necessary. The cat did as he was told and silently left the hut. Well then. The elderly cat looked back to Konoe. His tail swung greatly, and it noisily beat against the floor like a powerful whip. I suppose I should say welcome. Are you Kira's chieftain? Indeed. The Kiran elder brazenly looked Konoe up and down. Listen to what I tell you. To be frank, we don't allow outsiders into this village. However... Those black ears, that tail, those markings. The elder's gaze stopped at Conway's arms. Because the gauntlet was torn, his black markings were exposed. Have you always had those? No. Then you're saying they just suddenly appeared one day? Yes, I heard a rumor about you all and then I searched for this village thinking that you might know more about this. Oh? The chief snorted and approached Konoe, taking hold of his arm, his palms dry and rough. Black ears, a black tail, and black markings. Signs of the legendary curse. There are certainly people of Kira who fit that description. All the world may say so, but we only honor our traditions. For instance, Kira's elder stuck at his own arm and rubbed the mark on his skin. The mark faded and warped a bit. This is no birthmark. Instead, it is proof that we are people of Kira. They are merely marks drawn on our bodies with a blend of molasses and water. Many cats with black ears and tails come from Kira lineage. We adhere to protecting our pure bloodlines. 
but as for yours, the chief looked into Conway's eyes and Conway suddenly felt powerless. Unfortunately, it has nothing to do with us. The expectant hope Conway had been feeling was crushed when he heard that. Where do you come from? Kauru? Oh, Kauru. You left your village. Yes. I can never return. Not with a body like this. I can imagine. The elder sighed and cast his gaze towards the window. He seemed to be pondering something. The attending female cat behind the elder stared intensely at Konoe. She seemed strong-willed. Hmm, you came here for nothing, huh? While he stared out the window, the elder cat suddenly opened his mouth. No, it's fine. I just came to hear your story, really. He wouldn't be surprised if they chased him out or killed him. Though he knew their states were different, the Kirin elder seemed distracted by something else. Conway began to wonder if the rumors he'd heard in Kauru about them being savages were lies. The elder turned around and silently looked at Conway, then shook his head. I don't intend to accommodate strangers, but I understand how you feel. There was a time when the surrounding opposition would bear their fangs at us, too. It will be a harsh life with that body, perhaps even more than it is for us. Especially if this wasn't by your own choice. It is even more painful when the others don't understand. Huh. Conway grit his teeth and clenched his fist, his claws cutting into his palm. He didn't need to be here any longer. Conway turned on his heels and started to walk towards the door. Do you have a place to stay? He froze when the elder's voice suddenly called out. No, I don't mind if you stay in the village until the moon of light rises. Huh? Conway involuntarily turned around. The attending female cat's face suddenly stiffened. You must be exhausted. You should rest. Elder, please, wait. Be quiet, Kagari. Ah. Uh. The female cat, Kagari, controlled herself and reluctantly shut her mouth. The chieftain watched Kagari and continued. No matter the circumstances, an outsider is an outsider. Our people will probably not welcome you. But, if you are alright with that... The chief's tone was stern, but he probably understood that Konoe had no other place to rest. Konoe stood there in silence, strengthened by his confusion. His tail shook from left to right several times. He was honestly thankful for the offer, but, as the elder said, the cats of Kira wouldn't welcome him. Kagari, who was trying to hide her dissatisfaction, stared at the profile of the elder. Aside from that, he had one more concern, and that was... sacrifices. AKA getting eaten, possibly alive. Kira's lack of food supply was probably no different from Kauru or other villages. This meant that outsiders could be suitable prey. They could eat him without any qualms. Is there something else you want to ask? The elder narrowed his eyes as he looked at Konoe. Is there a system of sacrifice in Kira? Sacrifice? Ah, I see. The elder furrowed his brow in open disgust. We take pride in the Kirin bloodlines. Even if we should starve, we would never eat one of our own tribe. And to be frank, I don't think there is a single soul here who would risk eating your body. Ah. That much was true. It was said in Kaoru that those who ate a cursed cat became cursed themselves. Kira's families took pride in their blood. At least they seemed more practical than the Kaoru. Call Asato. The elder ordered the attending female cat. The female cat seemed to try to hide her confusion. However, she immediately left the hut. After a few minutes, the hut's door opened. The black cat that led Conway into the village came in. 
The elder beckoned to him. The black cat stepped forward, expressionless. This is Asato. He'll watch over you until the dawn. The cat called Asato looked at Konoe. The eyes that watched him were dark blue, like the night sky at dusk. He was probably a year or two older than Konoe, but Konoe felt an immature air about him, as if he were a child still developing. He noticed the elder watching Asato closely. His eyes shone with an aversive light, as if he were watching something disgusting. He hadn't looked at Konoe like that. Interesting. He thought that maybe something had happened. As ordered by the Elder, Asato led Konoe out of the hut. Konoe felt the other village cats watching him with hatred and curiosity as they passed, but it seemed like those gazes were cast not just at him, but also at Asato. He looked at Asato's back and the black tail walking in front of him. Asato didn't seem concerned and only walked in silence. There was conflict between cats of any village. It was that way in Kaoru too, of course. Konoe wasn't one to be too worried about it, but for some reason it made him uneasy. Asato's home was on the outskirts of the village. It was the same as the others, a simple house made of wood and stone. When Konoe entered it, his impression didn't change. When Asato entered the house, he immediately picked up something like a twig from a shelf, an ignition branch, a branch with crushed ore powder on its tip. When Asato struck the ignition branch against... It's a match. <laughs> When Asato struck the match against the wall, its tip caught fire. He put the flame into a lamp hanging beside the door. An orange light spread through the room. Konoe, who hated fire, avoided the lamp and moved to the opposite wall. Oh, that's right, he used those um, magical glowing leaves, as I recall. Since it was their first time meeting, he couldn't just ask him to put out the fire simply because he didn't like it. Asato sat against the wall. He gestured a hand in front of him when he saw Konoe still standing. He was probably gesturing for him to sit. Konoe took off his drawstring bag which he carried on his back and sat down where Asato indicated. He tried to casually look around. Further off, there was a bed, a storage pot, and a barrel for water. Besides that, there wasn't really anything at all here. Asato looked away and sat cross-legged, sometimes twitching the tip of his tail. Neither of them spoke. Konoe glanced at him. He couldn't read any emotions from his expressionless face. Before they entered Kira, Asato had been filled with murderous intent. His intense gaze was branded into Konoe's mind, but the way he looked now made him seem like an entirely different cat altogether. The awkward silence continued for some time, but his companion didn't say anything. Actually, he seemed a little nervous. Konoe removed his shoes from his weary feet and stretched them out. His lips parted slightly in a sigh. He removed his remaining gauntlet and began to groom. After being immersed in his grooming for a while, he suddenly felt a stare. Asato was watching him closely. Hmm. Am I doing something wrong? He also stared back, then started to feel like he had done something wrong. Konwai had asked his question out of reflex. Asato looked puzzled. What? Grooming. Huh? Uh, no. Asato averted his eyes, as if he'd panicked just a little. <laughs> so cute. His tail, thinner than Konoe's tail, beat against the floor restlessly. What? Asato watched Konoe out of the corner of his eyes, but immediately looked away again, then muttered in a soft voice. Hungry. 
Huh? Are, are you hungry? The sudden question surprised Konoe, but now that he mentioned it, he remembered his hunger. He felt like eating. A little, yeah. When Konoe answered, Asato stood up and walked towards the pot. He pulled some food out from inside and returned. Here. He held out several dried fruits. There were also cumes mixed in. Is it okay? Asato nodded, then looked away. Conway thought he was kind of weird. He got a completely different impression from him now than he did when they fought a little while ago. At first glance, Asato was expressionless, but he didn't seem like a cold person. He seems like a pretty shy person, actually. It's kind of cute. He was kind of... awkward? Perhaps he didn't like interacting with others. 